head cheese. Would you like some head cheese? Horrifying. So today I'm finally doing something I wanted to do. Am I wearing the same outfit as the last time I did this? Go on, Anna, buy some fucking clothes. This is part one of my new dinner in a dress series, which is pretty much what it sounds like. I'm gonna go through the decades uh, and make dinner using original recipes and clothes using my own designs throughout history. I'm starting with the 1910s. Um, I was gonna start with the 1900s, because that would have made more sense, but those dinner parties have like 11 courses and I can't afford that much food. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel 950 times so that I can monetize it. So the menu for this I have made from the 1916 Army Cook's Manual. I'm also making everything vegan, ah, because of who I am as a person. So I have picked the recipes that were easier for me to veganize, but otherwise I am using the original recipes and techniques, unless I don't want to. Cabbage, boil for three hours, I'd rather die. On the menu today, we are starting with a split pea soup. The main is gonna be English beef pudding with boiled cabbage, obviously, boiled onions, what the fuck. Um, and they said to serve boiled onions with cream sauce, so double horrifying, but we'll see how that works out. Dessert is tapioca pudding. <laughs> okay. And then I'm gonna make a 1916 trench cake. Maybe I'll tell you some history, but like, don't bank on it. I feel like I'm in a slightly hysterical mood today and I'm, I'm worried about it. So the ingredients for the split pea soup are split peas, stock, bacon, flour. Instead of browning bacon, I'm using just like fake chorizo because obviously I don't eat bacon. Um, but I'm just going to do the same thing with it and then chuck it in. Okay, how many fucking pints are in a gallon? What? That's so much more than I thought it was. Oh my god, I'm making so much. Oh, it'll be an imperial gallon? That's even more! Does it mean for me to boil this cabbage whole? It says strip off the outer leaves and cut out the cores. And then boil for three hours. Does it want me to boil a whole cabbage? Do you want me to boil a whole cabbage? I mean, I cored it. No one's ever asked me to core a cabbage before. It does say boil it for three hours, which is an excessively, like it's not gonna be a solid if you boil a cabbage for three hours. It's just gonna be. So maybe they do want it whole. Hmm. They do say salted, so. Yeah, the salt is what's gonna save this. When do you add the sugar? This is for 90 grams of tapioca, which I have made it into metric and then divided it by 10. Uh, so that's 90 grams of tapioca and then 180 grams of sugar. But they don't actually tell me to put the sugar in it, so this is just a cooking snack. <laughs> mm. So just gonna tie me through my cooking day. Update on the tapioca pudding, it looks like this. And you're probably thinking, yeah, that's more or less what I expect tapioca pudding to look like. Um, except you're wrong because according to the recipe, this needs to be boiled for another hour and a half. I don't know morally if I can do that. I didn't expect to feel so troubled. 
Oh, it's very sweet. Yeah. Raise some fat, make a dough, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. roll up in the dough. Six cans. I don't remember this. Steam from five to six hours. Fuck off. Fuck. Okay. This doesn't even have potatoes in it. Why did I buy all those potatoes? Change of plan. Our main is not English beef pudding. It's beef pot pie, which apparently is what I bought the ingredients for. This recipe is like five lines long and it says cook until nearly done like three times. Like it doesn't say any timings, it's just like, oh, just do it till it's done. Cut the beef into cubes, stew until nearly done. I did Satan. Um, I prepared it the other day. So I feel like I kind of really need to do anything with this. Potatoes and onions, when nearly done. Oh, okay, cool, cool. No timings, just whenever I fucking feel like it. And then, and then bake it until done. It's really giving me strong guidance. This is actually the recipe that most makes sense to me. It hasn't asked me to put in any ingredients that don't exist yet. Or told me to have ingredients and then not told me to add them. Baking powder? So I didn't mention baking powder so I just added in like a teaspoon because that feels about right for the amount of flour I've got here. And it also hasn't mentioned adding any liquid, but I'm gonna add in some cold water. I think a lot of these recipes just kind of assume there's a lot of assumptions made, um, which is what I would ordinarily do, except that I'm trying to follow it word for word. But that doesn't mean being willfully ignorant, right? Like, clearly I need to add some liquid. So it says cut out into like biscuits and I assume it means American biscuits but it doesn't tell me how many, it doesn't tell me how thick, it doesn't tell me shit. So when I said this was the easiest recipe to follow I was wrong. However I have made a whole bunch of them. It's time for everyone's favourite vegetable side dish, boiled onions. Now like most of us, I eat boiled onions for breakfast every day. But, um, I just picked this because I thought it sounded funny. I was like, boiled onions, that sounds atrocious. Now I have to peel all these fuckers. Select onions, not more than half as large as eggs. This is like a riddle. <laughs> I did go to the shop and all they had was like the little banana shallots so then I had to go to the Asian supermarket and buy this thing which was hugely overpriced so I may as well have done an 11 course like fucking dinner party after all for the cost of these mini onions Minions Oh no, I keep finding more Everything's boiling that should be boiling and some things are boiling that probably shouldn't be boiling, at least for not that long. Um, so I'm now back on safer ground, I'm going to make this trench cake. This is a recipe released by the government, um, and a lot of people wanted to send cakes and so on to the front lines in the First World War, um, but obviously they didn't have a lot of ingredients that were widely available. So this is actually a recipe that uses like vinegar and baking soda in place of eggs and so on. Um, which means it's a naturally vegan cake and it's also historically accurate. It says cook this for two hours. Like, it's just... No. It's not even like it's a... Well, I mean, it has fruit in it, but it's not like a fruit cake. Actually, at the moment, this is pretty good. If I bake it for two hours, it's gonna be shit. I can't do that morally. I'm already boiling onions and cabbages. I'm not baking this for two hours. Actually, this is delicious. <laughs> I'm not going to bake this for two hours. That's just a waste of cake.
Uh, the soup. It's bland. I mean, it's bland. <laughs> I kind of thought that like a split pea soup, this was like my fallback in case nothing else was edible. So I was like, soup's gonna be edible. It's just stuff in a bowl. There could stand to be more stuff in this bowl. It's probably good for me. Actually, the more I eat it, the more I like it. Might be like Stockholm Syndrome. Which is famously a thing that happens with soup. The pie is like, fine. There wasn't really anything in it to be not fine. Like, you could have made it good. This needs like, a proper, like a dark gravy. Because if this is beef, it isn't, it's Satan. So that that. But if it were beef, you'd want like a proper, like dark, beefy gravy. The northerner jumps out, but like this weird goop. I don't know how I feel about it. It should be good with ketchup. <laughs> they said to serve it with a cream sauce, and they didn't give me a recipe for a cream sauce. So I looked through the whole book, and eventually there was a recipe for like a weird one. It was basically a roux, so I just made a roux, and if that's wrong, fuck off. Oh my god. That's actually nice. This is like a weird meal. I don't think I'd serve it to someone. <laughs> so I guess that's a failure. <laughs> I guess that's kind of what you're looking for in a meal. But like you could eat it and not die. Oh, I don't want to eat the cabbage. I can't believe I have a whole head of boiled cabbage that I have to eat over the course of the next week. This is the dumbest idea I've ever had. The thing is, it's gone so pale. There's very little lateral cabbage left in this cabbage. I could have drunk the cabbage water and I feel like that would be a healthier meal. It's boiled cabbage. The thing is, it's just jelly, isn't it? Like, yeah, it looks like frog spawn. It's got weird floating dried fruit in it, but it is essentially just jelly. I hate it. I don't understand why you'd make this. Like, if the choice is between this and nothing, why wouldn't you make nothing? Yeah, look, it goes like nothing when you mix it up. Oh, that made it worse. <laughs> it changed color. Oh, maybe that's better? Cheers. That's not bad at all. If I cooked that for two hours, it would be dreadful. It's already quite dry. Maybe that's what they wanted. Maybe the point was that like it held up. It was supposed to last ages, I guess, if they were sending it overseas. Do I have cake in my teeth? Maybe it was supposed to last like a fruit cake, but it's not a fruit cake. So like in that scenario, just make a fruit cake. Don't cook this for two hours. What's wrong with you? I spent like five hours cooking today and I, I ended up with like frog spawn and liquid cabbage, taste of soup, boiled onions. I don't know why I did this. <laughs>